Good evening, everyone. We will now call the meeting to order. This is our regular meeting, May 8th, St. Lucie County School Board. Uh, we welcome each one that's here. We really enjoy seeing the parents come, and, and we have such a big group here that's going to perform for us tonight, and we're very grateful that we have very supportive parents within this district because without you, we can't do our job. So we thank you very much for your support. At this time, we're going to all stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. And directly after the Pledge of Allegiance, we will recite our Kids at Hope Treasure Hunters Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Please, re please remain standing as we adults are going to recite the Treasure Hunters Pledge to all the children in St. Lucie County Public Schools, okay? I, as an adult and treasure hunter, I am committed to search for all the talent, skills, and intelligence that exist in all children and youth. I believe all children are capable of success, no exceptions. Thank you very much. Please be seated. I'm going to ask the board if you would come down and enjoy our performance. And as the board is going down into their seats, I want to um, mention that our special presentation this evening is going to be given by River Edge Elementary students. They are directed uh, with their music by their music teacher, Ms. Mr. Epting, and he has a production staff that's here as well. Ms. Fitch Fisher and Ms. Votino. Uh, and so please, everybody, sit back and enjoy.
In a world of pure imagination, take a look and you'll see into your imagination. Thank you, young people. Guess what? You inspired me so much that I'm going to try to make it to at least one of those plays. And my schedule has been very, very busy, so I wasn't coming, but I'm telling you, you were so good tonight, I'm going to try to come and bring all three of my grandsons so they can see you, okay? Thank you so much. I want you to do your best, and I want to really enjoy that play. I love drama. And I love plays, so I'm looking so forward to it. I'm going to really try to put it in my schedule. Parents, thank you so much for bringing and supporting our young people. Um, thank you, principal, and, and your uh, APs as well for working, and our teachers with ev each and every one of them. And would you please put your hands back together again for these young people here. I'm going to ask the board at this time if you would please come back. And parents, you are definitely welcome to stay and to watch a full board meeting in process and progress. Thank you again. I'm sure it was. And for those who may not know the name of the song that was sung, it was the golden age of chocolate and the pure imagination. Thank you, young folks. We will now open up our public hearing, but we'll wait until the young people kind of get out and or sit down At this time, I will open up the public hearing to receive any comments on the proposed amendments to school board policy 6.549. Do we have any speakers in our audience that would like to address the policy at this time? Please come forward if you are there, out there. Okay, seeing that there are none. Oh, wait. 
Oh, we have somebody coming up. Okay. Yes, ma'am, as you come up, please come to the microphone and give your name and you may begin. You have about, what, three minutes? Is, three minutes. I'm not sure what the policy is, but is this the time where Excuse you Excuse me, we do have feedback up here with the mics. Okay, thank you. Okay, begin now. Please give me your name. For Harmony me. Allen. Okay. I'm not sure, is this where you can address concerns that you have with the school, or is it on this specific policy that you're talking about? It is on this specific policy that I'm talking about. Okay. If you have concerns um, and you, that you want to address with the school about a concern in the district, would you please fill out a form and get it right back up to us immediately? You'll hand it to Miss Chris over there. Oh, where, where do I get the form from? In the back. Okay. 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 This, at this time, this is about the policy that we want to receive any comments if there are any out there. Okay, seeing that there are none, board members, oh, we close the public hearing meeting first. And I wanna ask the board members if you have any comments or any questions regarding the policy. Superintendent, may we have your recommendation, please? Recommend the board approve the proposed amendment to school board policy number 6.549. May I have a motion and second on the floor? So moved. So moved by Mr. Ingersoll. Second. Second by Ms. Harley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. We will go into our special order of business and at this part of the agenda, we will ask um, Superintendent Gent if he would. Thank you, Dr. Take Mills. I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Patrick, and she will begin this part of the program. Good evening, board chair, board members, and Superintendent Gent. It is my pleasure at this time to invite Dr. Kevin G. Perry to the podium because he will be presenting the 2018 awards to students who have been recipients of the Dr. Samuel S. Gaines Essay Contest. Dr. Perry? Welcome, Dr. Perry. Thank you. Madam Chair, school board members, Mr. Gent, as a part of the district's recognition and celebration of African American History Month, students in grades three through 12 are given an opportunity to write an essay that describes an African American person in St. Lucie County who has made a difference in the student's life and explain why. The contest is named for a true educational pioneer who served the children of St. Lucie County and worked in this community for some 34 plus years. This is also a wonderful way to help our students prepare for FSA rights, for scholarships, and college applications. I'm going to ask our premier sponsor, Mr. Brian Garcia from Remnant Construction, who provides some monetary donations for these students to join us as well. Brian? And Brian is going to help present the certificates to these students as well. In elementary, the third place recipient is Yorali Salgado from Fort Pierce Magnet School of the Arts. And then we ask that they please come forward. <laughs> Second place is Leslie Hernandez from Sam Gaines Academy. And the first place winner in elementary school is Hayden Starkman from Savannah Ridge. In middle school, third place recipient is Michaela Sannon. Second place is Leslie Aguela Anyugwe from Sam Gaines Academy. And the first place winner in middle school is Jaden Diago from Northport K-8. And in high school, third place is Jamiel Wiley from Lincoln Park Academy. Yeah. 
Second place is Sarah Abe from Lincoln Park Academy. And the first place winner is Chantel Mitchell from, from, from Performance Based Preparatory Academy. Mr. Superintendent, would you please join me? Every year since the inception of this program, Brian Garcia has been the monetary sponsor. And this year, we want to thank Brian and Remnant Construction for their continual support of the Sam Gaines Essay Contest. Thank you again. The school board is invited to join Governor Rick Scott in recognizing May 10th, 2018 as Children's Mental Health Awareness in Florida. For this, I invite Ms. LaTanya Green and Ms. Donna Gill from the Exceptional Student Education and Student Services Department to the podium to share a proclamation with you. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Superintendent, Superintendent Gent. Thank you for allowing us to read this proclamation in, um, from Rick, Governor Rick Scott tonight. Whereas addressing the complex mental health needs for children, youth, and families, today is a fundamental key to the future of Florida. And whereas mental health is critical to the well-being of our families, schools, communities, and businesses, and whereas untreated mental health issues in children and youth can lead to lifelong challenges for the children, their families, and the community, and Whereas stigma and fear of discrimination may keep those who might benefit from mental health services from seeking help and whereas there is a need for comprehensive services and supports that are family driven, youth guided, culturally and linguistically com competent and community based and whereas it is appropriate that a day should be set apart each year to recognize the importance of our children's mental health and well-being and our responsibility to promote them and whereas all citizens agencies and organizations interested in partnering for health and hope following trauma can unite to promote effective services now, now therefore on behalf of, of governor rick, rick scott, scott in the state of Florida, do hereby extend greetings and best wishes to all observing May 10th, 2018 as Children's Mental Health Awareness Day in Florida. So we are asking that everyone please join us on May 10th by wearing green as we recognize May 10th as Children's Mental Health Awareness Day in the state of Florida. Thank you. And for this next award, which is from the Florida Council on Economic Education, I believe I have got some very special guests in the audience who have brought something to contribute to our students. So if they could please join me while I read a little bit about this special award. Students learn about the economy in a fun and creative way when they participate in the Florida Council on Economic Education um, Spring and Fall Poster Contest. Students from throughout Florida in grades K through 12 are invited to participate by creating um, artistic renderings that 
are about a concept in the economy, such as trade, savings, opportunity, cost, entrepreneur, debt, competition. And we have several students who have earned recognition from this last um, round of competition. So we would like to recognize them for their uh, awards, and we are bringing them forward this evening. Uh, there we are, thank you. <laughs> I was stalling just a wee bit. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Okay, thank you. Well, we have two of our students here, but we're still going to call all of the names and recognize. So what we have are four students from St. Lucie County who showed stellar artisticness with regard to these concepts and terms. And we have Janavi, Gen who created a poster to describe trade. And Janavi is a first grader from Village Green Elementary. Genevieve, I'm sorry, I pronounced it incorrectly. Yes. Yes. She's not here, but his mother's here. Oh, okay. He's his mother. So his mother's here? Jaden Jade yeah. Carey is his mother's here? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And you know, parents always support their children. So we understand that Jaden Carey could not make it, but his mother is here. And Jaden created a calendar about consumers and producers. So could Jaden's mom come forward? Come on, mom. <laughs> All right. And we have Jada Khan, who was a fourth grade student, and her um, poster was on savings. And she did a fabulous job on savings, Jada. And our final recipient this evening, Gracious, created a poster that showed an entrepreneur very hard at work. And I'm sure that she's going to keep up that tradition as she grows. Better late than never, Mr. Gent. He's here. Yay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, can I get Jaden and Jada, please? Come. All right, even though the students did the arts and the poster, Jaden did win his last fall for the calendar. So we decided to get calendars for all you. So Jada and um, Jaden and Jada as JJs are going to pass one out to you. And Jaden's picture is in June, so next month. That's good. Yeah. All right, so if we could all pose for the picture, maybe have those calendars in front, that would be fabulous. Thank you so much. All right, how about one final round of applause for these wonderful students. Thank you. All right, and we all know that education is indeed an odyssey, but we have one particular group that truly are taking an odyssey, an odyssey to Ames, Iowa. They are going to the world finals for Odyssey of the Mind. Morningside Elementary's team have been a spectacular um, symbol of fortitude and moving forward from local to regional onto the world finals competition. We're here to recognize them tonight. 
Um, Julie Moore is the instructor at Morningside Elementary, who is also the coach for the Morningside Odyssey of the Mind team. She explained that this team operates on their own, and they were challenged to create a team-operated vehicle. Now you see the team pictured up there, but so many people wanted to know just what is this vehicle that they created that had to be operated on their own. So I have a couple of pictures here. And here is the, operated, or the team operated vehicle. The team was um, tasked to show that this vehicle could be used for curling, tracking, and jousting. And all the while the team was doing this, they were telling an original and humorous story at this competition. Their solution was incorporating uh, a creative use of recycled materials. The team choreographed a song and dance and uh, used this uniquely powered vehicle. Uh, it was successful in all areas of the competition and therefore they are on their way and they are currently involved in some very heavy duty uh, fundraising as well. I've been seeing the pictures posted on Facebook of car washes and I know that our Education Foundation is also very, very heavily involved in helping them raise funds to get to Ames, Iowa for the competition on May 23rd through 26th. So we are very, very happy that you all have done everything and we have some certificates for you. <laughs> and if uh, you are a parent or a teacher from Morningside Elementary or someone who supported this team, could you stand too? Because I know you've been involved in this every step of the way as well. And we'll give them a nice round of applause. <laughs> I'm hearing the coach say that there are some shy individuals in the audience. Congratulations, team. St. Lucie Public Schools applauds leadership and positive action uh, of our students. And this evening, we invite Kaylee Wampler forward. She is a St. Lucie West Centennial High School junior, and she has already started making her mark and lending her voice to causes for which she feels passion. Most recently, she has been an eloquent speaker at the League of Women Voters. In addition, she organized the March for Our Lives in Port St. Lucie. Kaylee, you are to be admired for your advocacy, your self-empowerment, and your encouragement to engage others in positive community action. Congratulations. Now as we move to the, uh, the uh, final order of business with our STAR Awards, the STAR program's focus is to recognize employees for their conduct, their skills, and their actions that correlate to our district's vision and for people going above and beyond. And our first uh, individual that we would like to bring forward today is Ms. Wanda Bird. They call her Ms. Rosie from Transportation. Now, I told her this was going to be easy, and I've already messed that up, so I'm sorry. Miss Bird is up here today because a parent has sent us a note. Let me read to you what he has said about Miss Wanda Bird, who they call Miss Rosie. 
My name is Richard Cameron, and my son Jaden rides bus 2631, driven by Wanda Bird, AKA Miss Rosie. I just wanted to send a brief email to praise Miss Bird. My son was a very scared little one at the beginning of the year to ride a bus, and Miss Bird took all the fear out of that. She is congenial, friendly, and professional. We have come to consider her one of the family, and she always is on time and reliable. She greets Jaden every day with a smile and waves to me to confirm security. She always waits until he is settled before pulling off, and we are very thankful for such a wonderful professional to begin his day of learning. Thank you for providing an excellent service that is greatly appreciated by a working single parent like me. So thank you. So we're on a roll with transportation, ha ha. We would like to call Miss Denise Coyle up to the podium. And she is a star because of one of her sixth grade students letters. A sixth grader from Southport Middle School has written in and he also drew a picture to go along with his letter. In his letter, he says, I am writing to tell you about my bus driver, Ms. Coyle. Coyle. First, I want to tell you that she is very, a very nice person. She picks me up at Village Green and takes good care of me on the bus every day. She shows me many places and very good things when I am on the bus. She really brightens up my mornings before I go to school. I am glad to have a bus driver like Ms. Coyle, and I hope that she will be my bus driver for seventh grade and for eighth grade. I also want to say that this is my first time riding the school bus and I am not worried anymore because of her kindness and her help. She also keeps me safe every day. Thank you for reading my letter. Sincerely, Justin Harris. Now, as we move to our very last two, these two teachers are heralded by one of their colleagues, Mrs. Jacqueline Harris of Village Green, sent in these two teachers, Ms. Beth Payne from Morningside Elementary and Ms. Margot Williams from Village Green Elementary. <laughs> Ms. Harris sent two letters in depicting the wonderful qualities of both of these individuals. I'm going to read a small excerpt from both, both, just to give you an idea of how wonderful these teachers were in the professional development of Ms. Harris. To begin with Ms. Payne, she says, Ms. Bain, Ms. Payne has been like the go-to big sister at school. She embraced me with my son and my son with open arms. She has never been too busy to help me whenever I needed her assistance, whether she was a teacher or a coach. Ms. Payne always made time to come down to my room and support my students who needed that extra encouragement, which is what I call, let's make a big deal. My students knew when I asked Ms. Payne to stop by, it was because she was going to make a big deal and make some loud noise and showing how extremely proud she was of their work and of the accomplishments. And in regard to Ms. Williams, she says, I have had the pleasure of meeting Ms. Williams when she joined the Gaines Academy team back in 2010. She has been like a mom, a mentor, and so much more to me. I was just starting out in my teaching career, and I truly believe that this day, it was the day that she was an angel and a blessing to me. Ms. Williams has been instrumental and like a rock and a pillar of strength when I most needed it. So she does value the colleagues, and that is a reflection of what so many of our teachers feel, and um, it's so nice to have that come forward. So wonderful, wonderful tributes to all of you. Thank you, ladies. If we'd like to gather for a picture.
At this time, we will have our CTA report and we welcome Mr. David Freeland to the podium. Madam, oh. Madam Chair, uh, board members, Superintendent Gent, good evening. I'd like to take a few minutes to discuss the non-instructional staff that I represent, and this is not a new topic. If you've read the latest voice, you may have seen that I wrote about the Air Force, their mission, and how every airman, regardless of role, is pivotal to the success of the fly, fight, win mission. Not unlike the Air Force, St. Lucie schools have a complete mission statement, but if you ask employees, by and large, you would hear a much shorter mission, every student, every day. I represent 800 or so non-instructional employees who make the every student, every day mission possible. They show up at work every day and do jobs that support our students and our instructional staff and make it possible to successfully execute that mission. There are ESE professionals who, have, who are out there every day changing diapers. There are ESOL paraprofessionals who spend today translating for students so they could successfully complete their FSA assessments. We have clerks who spend today greeting students and families while at the same time collecting extra shirts for students who spill their lunch so they can have a clean shirt to wear during the day. There are bus aides who spent this morning and this afternoon protecting some of our most medically fragile students so they arrive at school safely and home safe and sound at the end of the day. Many, many of these same St. Louis employees are working second jobs to keep the lights on in their own homes or to be sure their own children have health insurance. Last summer we sat at the table and reached an agreement. Part of that agreement was a commitment on the district's part to make extra compensation for our members a priority, including our non-instructional staff. The district has provided extra compensation for our instructional staff and it is, it is appreciated. But we must be sure that all of our members, including non-instructional staff, are taken care of. They are critical to our students' success and they should be treated as the critical part of the team that they are. For about the same dollars as two administrative salaries, the district could provide the additional compensation they committed to for over 800 employees. We meet again this Thursday afternoon, and I hope that Thursday evening I will be able to report to my members that the school district has honored that commitment. Thank you. Do we have a CWA report this evening? Okay, seeing that there are none, we're gonna go straight into our consent agenda, the adoption thereof. And I'd like to call for a motion and a second to adopt the consent agenda as presented. So moved. So moved by Ms. Hensley. Mm -hmm. Second. Second by Ms. Hilson. Okay, All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion then carries 5-0. And the superintendent, would you please give your recommendation? I recommend the board approve the consent agenda as submitted. Can I have a motion and a second on the table? So moved. Second. So moved by Mr. Ingersoll and second by Ms. Hensley. Any uh, oppose? All in favor? Aye. Aye, okay. Motion carries 5-0 with that. And um, any board member have a comment on the consent agenda? Okay, may we take a vote? Oh, we already did the vote, didn't we? Yes. We did the vote. So um, motion carries 5-0, and we go into our informational reports. Uh, we do have informational reports uh, for information only. No board action is necessary on that. So now we will go into our superintendent and staff reports on selected topics. Thank you. Just a couple of items. Um, this Saturday at the uh, Met Stadium First Data Field, we, um, the, the um, Education Foundation is going to sponsor a, uh, a, an all-star game before the Mets game, and it's going to be where um, district personnel are going to be playing against the firefighters in uh, softball. And you've seen uh, Dr. Perry's picture on the cover of that in the cap and gown. He's going to wear a cap and gown and play softball. So that's going to be at uh, 4 o'clock on Saturday, and they're having vendor booths out there from 3 to 4. And then uh, this month, too, really, as school is winding down, another uh, very successful school year, but it's really the highlight of why the children come to school in our mission statement to equip them to graduate. And our graduations will start Monday, I'm sorry, Tuesday, May 22nd. LPA will be at 8.30. Westwood will follow them at 12.30, and then PSL at 4.30, all on May 22nd at the Finn Center. 
Then we'll go out on Friday on the 20, I'm sorry, on Thursday on the 24th, we'll have Centennial at 8.30 in the morning at the fairgrounds. And then Friday, we'll have Central and Treasure Coast High School, Central at 8.30, Treasure Coast at 1.30 at the fairgrounds. The reason we only have one on that Thursday is because we still have some state testing and other testing going on at some of the school centers, and so we weren't able to incorporate that. But this will be a great opportunity. The students will come across the stage. The parents will be there. It's a great, uh, a great accomplishment, and we're looking forward to that. And then uh, we'll be looking forward to the, uh, the close of another uh, very successful year. And summertime, again, we want to encourage the parents to look online on the district webpage for um, activities, fun activities uh, that, are, that keep the kids from sliding into the summer and forgetting some things. And we'll be doing that at our camps as well, all the camps that are out there and different organizations. This will be available to them as well. Looking forward to a, um, a strong close to the, uh, to, the, to the end of the year and then a, a very um, welcome summer. And then we'll be kicking it off again in August. We'll still work through and have our general meetings as well as the board's aware. But uh, again, looking forward to our graduations in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gent. Uh, we're going to go into our board reports. We'll start with Mr. Ingersoll. No report. Okay, Ms. Hawley. No report. Ms. Hilson. Ms. Hensley. Well, I do have a report. Um, the Children's Services Council Youth Awards that we have every year is coming up is next Monday. Uh, if you're interested, let me know. We can probably still find you a seat. It is an opportunity for us to honor students, kids that are activists in our community and uh, as well as a couple of champions for children who are adults who work way beyond the, their call of duty for, for kids in general. Also, um, some of us were at the Fort Pierce Central panel on uh, safe schools and violence the other day. It was absolutely impressive with what the kids did with their research and the way they presented their, their studies and their cases and actually suggestions of what could be done, and I think that that will be shared uh, statewide shortly. Uh, also, Kaylee was here. Uh, she is uh, willing and anxious to be an activist on many issues dealing with students, and what I find very enriching is that they feel comfortable that their schools, their administrators, their teachers, and even the board and the superintendent are very encouraging for them to be true advocates in their community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hensley. Uh, we also attended, some of us on the board attended um, a, the, the, the bar members uh, company with friends event in which they celebrated uh, Law Day uh, this past week with the friends of the Reuben Smith Law Library. And uh, this took place on May 1st. Uh, our children, I wanna thank the community for taking part and what we do with our children every day. I, I mentioned it to the parents earlier, thanking them because they play a major part in the lives of, of helping us with our children. And so we wanna thank the Friends of Law uh, for what they do because they do this every year and they honor our children uh, that compete uh, with art. And we are very into all of the arts here in St. Lucie County Public Schools, and we thank our community for helping us encourage our children uh, in every form of the arts. And then we also had um, uh, the lead government leaders luncheon. We had the opportunity to have it at one of our schools, our culinary department, students um, at Fort Pierce Central hosted a governor's leader luncheon and we had both mayors attend, in, uh, and they did an absolute fabulous job. So I wanna put this out there to the community right now because I know Fort Pierce Central has said that they would love to uh, do more events for the community in their culinary department, and I'm sure each of our schools would. So if you are out there with a club or group or uh, such, and you want to have an event during lunchtime or breakfast, please make sure you call one of our schools and get our culinary students the practice necessary there as good as the experts. The food was absolutely fabulous and we just want the community to know that you can call one of the schools and find out if they will host an event uh, for you. And then, let's see, what else has happened this week? Oh, we, we had the um, Lincoln Park always have every year 
They honor um, the uh, students uh, that went before uh, to Lincoln Park, before it became what, as we know it, and the history that follows behind that. And we had Dr. Gaines uh, once again. He's always the speaker, and it was such rich history on Lincoln Park. I really enjoyed that. Um, at this time, oh, we want our attorney, uh, Attorney Harold, do you have any comments? No, I don't. Thank you. Okay, seeing that he has none, we are going to go ahead and close out um, our board meeting.